Now, Harada was a junior high school track and field coach. He taught in junior high school in Japan at the worst school in the city of Osaka. Osaka had 380 schools and he taught at the worst one. It was in the slums. He said there were many days he, he was afraid to go to work because there was dope addicts, prostitutes. He was afraid to go to school, it was so bad. His school was rated the lowest in track and field in the whole city. He said it was so bad they wouldn't even rate us. He was the worst school in track and field. He was a coach, but he wants to. Then he saw, you know, you know there, are, there are coaches in this city that every year has a great team. What are they doing that they have a great team every year that I'm not doing? I don't care where the people live. So Harada said, what can I do with these students? I want to make them into champions. They never had a champion. And he put together the Harada method. It took him quite a few years studying the best in the world. And he put together this methodology. And then two years later, they had 13 gold medals. 13 gold medals. Huh. 13 gold medals. That gold medal meant that they were the best athletes, not just in Osaka, they were the best athletes in all of Japan. 13 gold medals. It never happened before to any school, even to the best school in Japan. And here's the worst school. What did he do to get 13 gold medals? He was on national television. The newspapers wrote up. Harada became very, very famous in Japan when this happened. And then he left the company. The amazing thing in this process, though, by the way, is not only did the school become 13 gold medals, but the school itself became number one. Number one out of 380 schools. Number one in the slums. Now it's 12 years later. 12 years later. The school is still, still number one. Harada left 10 years, 12 years ago. He left the school system. When he left, Keiko Morimoto, he was, she was an English teacher, and she became the track and field coach. So when Harada left, the English teacher took over the team, and the team continued to be number one run by an English teacher. She eventually left and joined, now she's Harada's assistant in Osaka. Osaka, I mean, Harada opened up his own consulting company and now she's working with him. The nice thing is she was an English teacher, so I get a lot, if I communicate, I get things in English from her, <laughs> which is very nice. This comes from Mr. Um, Nakamura. We want continuous improvement. That's not enough. That's not enough at all because it doesn't mean anything. Continuous improvement. It doesn't tell us what we're capable of doing by continuous improvement. Nakamura said, if you can improve point, well, I think point one percent a day. That's point oh oh one percent a day. At the end of three years, you can double your productivity. Double your productivity. If we can get everybody improving 0.1% a day, that's 22 seconds. So everybody looks and says, what am I doing? And how do I improve at 22 seconds every single day? 0.1% a day is, should be the target of continuous improvement. And at the end of two, three years, you will double the productivity of your company. That's what Canon did. Canon took this 0.1% a day, and Canon is one of the best companies in the world, and I don't know how they survive, because Canon is a camera company, and now you've got these. 
right? You don't need a camera anymore. This has everything. Take video. George takes videos on these too. These are amazing. Paul, Paul uses it. What? Paul. Oh, Paul. Only iPhone. Yeah, because only iPhone. He takes, and it's amazing the technology that's put into this. Canon has a real struggle, but they're improving 0.1% every single day and succeeding. He's written now 17 books. When I met him, he was up to nine. Now he's up to 17 books, all on the Harada method. Now, what fundamentally is, is the Harada method? This is a challenge, too. What, what are we fundamentally doing with the Harada method? What are we doing fundamentally? What are we doing? What are we doing? Choosing a goal. Choosing a goal. What else are we doing? What are we really doing with this method? How did he write 17 books? What are we doing? Repeating. Repeating. What are we doing? Repeating. We're teaching. We're teaching leaders how to lead. We're teaching leaders how to lead, and we're teaching everybody to become a leader. We're teaching leaders how to really lead people. That's what Harada has been doing these last number of years, writing 17 books on it, using the Harada method. And he goes everywhere in the world to study. He's been to Shanghai because we claim that Shanghai has the best educational system in the world. He's been to Finland because Finland has a great educational system. A key is to be self-reliant, and we went over that together. But I like this too, because Harada says, this is a real key, is a self-directing, self-reliant person is building their skills and knowledge. They're building their skills and capabilities, number one, and they're sitting on a foundation of good character. This is important. We're not just making profits for our stockholders. We have a foundation of public service spirits. We're caring for others. We're helping others grow. We're sharing experiences. We are all members of this earth. And if we all don't do our job well, you know, it only takes one of them to, to destroy the earth crazy what's going on in the world, especially in the Middle East, but even here. A key is to care and serve others. That's a key to the Harada method because you're going to focus on finding your goal and you're going to look at your purpose, but you also build in to serving others. Why? What does serving others got to do with you succeeding? What is other people? What are others? Why should I serve other people? I mean, philosophically, I want a better world, but why should you personally serve others to help make you better? I think when you serve, when you serve others, you minimize your ego. You break down your ego. One, one, very good. What else? This will give you. Why serve others? It's funny. You know, I know a little bit about religion. It's, it's very dangerous when you know a little bit about something. Christ said, serve others the way I serve you. Christ represents the highest manifestation of creative energy on the earth is what Christ really represents. The highest aspect is Christ. And Christ said, serve others the way I serve you. Serve others is the key. It'll be your highest motivator. If you ha we have a, she has a grandchild, my great-grandchild. That baby is born helpless, can't do anything. What can it do? It can, it can eat and crap. That's about all it can do. Do you know? It totally depended upon us. If you didn't serve that child, it couldn't live a day. And it's the same thing in life. 
You know, we don't, we're not aware of this. We give life to each other. And if we don't serve others, we're detrimental to ourselves. You really can't succeed, but yet, I don't want to get too involved in politics, you know, because we have such a bad system in the world right now. This capitalistic system is a very bad system. I'm not saying communism is a good system. No, not at all. But capitalism is a very bad system because it's fed, you know, of such a small percentage of the people. The benefit of such a small percentage of the people. And these small percentage of the people, they don't care. They're having a good time, so they don't care about the rest of the earth. They don't care really true about serving. But Harada says, and it's really true, you focus on serving yourself. You become the best, and also you help other pe people that they become the best. Harada wants to train leaders to be leaders. So that's a great focus of us. I want you to be great, lean leaders. So we're going to talk a lot more about lean on this, in this week. And we're going to talk about how to improve your leadership skill. What does a coach do? A really great coach like John Wooden, UCLA, 11 years in a row almost, he had the best college basketball team in America. 11 years, almost 11 years in a row. What, what do you do when you're a really great coach? What is unique about a great coach? They try to bring out the best on the person. You try to bring out the best of the person. That's your job. You're not really giving them anything. You're bringing it out. In fact, if you look at the definition of the word educate. Educate, I always thought education meant putting something into the child. I'm going to educate you. I'm going to give you something for you to learn. But when you go back to the original Latin, educare, it means take out of. That means all of the knowledge is inside the child. And you, the teacher, have to bring it out into their awareness. And this is so true. We can pass these. Oh, yeah, this is a very great key. Very great key. Harada said, look at yourself as a glass. Look at yourself as a glass. And I talk, you should be taking notes. Look at yourself as a glass. You always want to be empty. Always want to be empty. Because when you fill up, what can you put in? If it's filled, what can you do? You can't put any more in. So always look at yourself as an empty glass. You can always be filled. I watch people talk with each other, and it's human nature. We're driving in the car this morning, and Fitzroy tells about, well, my child did this, and Phyllis right away says, well, my child does this. Then Fitzroy says, my, he's, he's much better than, than the rest of us. But we are always full with ourselves. Forget about that. Forget about that. You are perfect the way you are. You are you're a beautiful, perfect person. Keep yourself empty. That's the trick in life. So you're always learning. You're always open and always learning. We get together with people and we want to tell them. Me too. I want to tell people how smart I am because I was such a dope in school. So I want to go through in life and make up for it to tell people how smart I am. I want to keep this glass empty at all times. And a self-determined person to achieve goals, goal-oriented. You want to win a gold medal of life. That'll motivate you if you can get a real strong purpose and a real strong goal. You want to win. You want to have good habits. Good habits. A reflective thinker. A strong belief in the importance of balancing one's spirit, skill, physical strength, and lifestyle as the sources of human power. So we did this self-reliant test. Now, I go to Uniglo. This comes from Harada. Uniglo is a wonderful store, store in Japan. I love it. It's like the L.L. Bean. We have a, 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 a store in America called L.L. Bean. And you can get wonderful, wonderful clothing from L.L. Bean. Very reasonable. Very, very well made. 
and very inexpensive. It's a wonderful store. And Uniqlo is like that. Uniqlo wants to be the largest retailer of clothing in the world. They want to be the largest. A couple of years ago, they came to America. So they're now in New York City, too. I think they're in, in Seattle. They're coming to America. At Uniqlo, and I go there every time because I love cashmere sweaters. You see the sweater that Phyllis is wearing? So I go to Japan. I used to spend $400 when I went to England. I had a partnership in England, and I'd love to go to England to buy cashmere because I'm allergic to wool. So I buy the cashmere. I'm not allergic to cashmere. But it would cost four or $500 to get a good cashmere sweater in England. I go to Uniqlo, and now I can spend 60 to $90 to get a wonderful cashmere sweater at Uniqlo. It's in, it's, it might be made in China, but it's wonderful. So I go to Uniqlo. Well, this woman goes into Uniqlo. She has a baby, and the baby's sick. And she goes to the manager and says, you know, can I use your telephone? My baby is sick, and I want to call a doctor. And the manager says, no, I'm sorry. I have a rule book, and the rule book says you can't, you can't, we can't give the phone to a customer. We can't, it's in our rule book. I'm sorry, I can't do it. This was a few years ago before these mobile phones, because now it would be different. Well, she goes next door, gets a phone, calls an ambulance to help the child. Then she sits down and she writes a letter to Mr. Yamai. Yamai, Y-A-M-A-I, is the richest man in Japan. He owns Uniqlo. He's the richest man in Japan. She writes him a letter and he gets it. He gets the letter. And he is so unhappy, so unhappy, that he picks up the phone and he calls Harada. Yanni said, I might look successful, but I've made many mistakes. People take their failures too seriously. You have to be positive and believe you will find success next time. He says, a manual, it still exists, but the ultimate judge is the individual. So even though I have a, a rule, that rule is to be broken if it's going to serve the customer. I want, then he calls up Harada, and he says, Harada, I want you to help make my employees self-reliant. And Harada went in and became a big client for Harada to teach them to become self-reliant. Teach my employees self-reliance. And the Harada method. Okay.